Greetings everyone, Phil here from Nintendo Village and in this video we're going to run through a bunch of games coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2021 that you should be excited about. To be clear, every game in this video has a stated 2021 release window, so there's no Bayonetta 3, no Metro Prime 4 and no Breath of the Wild 2. We may well get one or more of those games this year, but as they are currently officially TBC, they ain't in. That said, I have discussed the likelihood of us seeing them this year in another video, so go and check that out. All that remains is for me to sell myself to you and to beg you to please like this video if you find it useful and subscribe to the channel. We have new videos up all about Nintendo every single week, so it will be well worth your while. Without further ado, let's get into it. First up on this list is one of my most anticipated games this year, and it's Cyber Shadow. Retro inspired, as you can tell, action platformer developed by Machine Head Games, which I believe is a huge team of one guy. The reason this caught my eye though is it's the first game to be published by Yacht Club Games that doesn't feature Mr. Shovel Knight and his benighted posse. Happily, there's not long to wait either, as it's dropping in like four days from the day this video goes up. Huzzah! Whilst we're waiting for some news on Breath of the Wild 2, Zelda-inspired indie adventure Blue Fire looks like just the thing to keep us happy. Originally highlighted in last March's Indie World Showcase, its original Summer 2020 release window was eventually pushed back to Q1 2021 thanks to, well, you know, the apocalypse. Thankfully, it's now got a solid release date of February 4th, and I gotta say, I really like the look of this one. The combination of hardcore platforming, whimsical characters, and challenging combat tickles me in all the right places. And the main character looks rather cool too. I for one will definitely be giving this one a whirl. Next up is I think the creepiest looking game on this list, unless you're the kind of person who's freaked out by the mascot for Balan Wonderworld, Little Nightmares 2. The first game received tons of praise for its fresh take on the genre, full as it was of creepy imagery and disturbing encounters. The second game looks to offer more of the same, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if you're looking to get your Halloween kicks early this year, it may well be worth picking this up when it arrives on Switch on the 11th of February. A day later, we've got the first major release from Nintendo themselves this year with the arrival of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Regular viewers will have heard me gush about this game in last week's video, but in summary, it's goddamn brilliant, and the Bowser's Fury Edition looks like the Super Mario Odyssey DLC we, for some reason, never got. I'm looking forward to giving the multiplayer on this one a world too, as now that it can be played online, my friends and I could run around together with glee dressed as Cat Mario without the lockdown police shouting at us. February 23rd sees the long-awaited Western release of Persona 5 Strikers. It's another Muso Warriors game, so if you're into Hyrule Warriors or Fire Emblem Warriors or any of the other Warriors games, this might well be up your street. It gives Persona 5 the Age of Calamity treatment with a whole new story all of its own related to the events of Persona 5. If you happen to own a PlayStation and enjoyed that particular RPG, or if it's just that Joker is your current favourite Smash character, you might want to keep your eye on this one. Speaking of RPGs, the first major one arrives in February in the form of Bravely Default 2. Confusingly the third game in the series, after Bravely Default and Bravely the Second on the DS, it's one that's had a demo on the eShop for a little while now, so you can go and check it out ahead of its 26th of February release date. I've had that demo downloaded for god knows how long, but thanks to my ever-expanding back catalogue haven't actually gotten around to checking it out yet. I'm reliably informed it's good though, and I've never heard a bad word said about the first two games, so at the very least, it'll be worth checking that demo out to see if it tickles your fancy. Elsewhere on the RPG front, Monster Hunter Rise barrels onto Switch on the 26th of March. Capcom are apparently very pleased with the pre-orders they've received so far, so it's shaping up to be a rather popular Switch exclusive. It too has a demo available, although that demo will be disappearing on the 31st of January apparently, so hopefully, if you like the look of this, you're watching this video before then so you can go and check it out. Also, Monster Hunter has doggos now. That's a win. If RPGs and convoluted weapon crafting systems aren't your thing, then Balan Wonderworld, which arrives on the same day as Monster Hunter Rise, might well be for you. It's a new 3D platformer from Square Enix, and interestingly reunites Sonic the Hedgehog's director and character designer for the first time in 20 years. The aesthetic of the game is certainly eye-catching, and there's more than a hint of knights to that mascot if you ask me, 
Plus, it's another co-op game, which is always nice. Happily, we're hitting a hat-trick of demos with this one too, with a taster version of the game due to arrive on the Switch eShop on the 28th of January. I do like it when publishers let us try out their games before we buy. Fingers crossed it's as good as it looks, the world needs more 3D platformers. I'm not entirely sure what genre you put Pokemon Snap in. It could well be in its own photography genre, along with the first game and, I don't know, Fatal Frame or something. But despite the seemingly tedious premise, taking photos of Pokemon whilst your cart moves along a fixed track, if it's anything like the N64 original, it promises to be a delightful time. As you move through the levels, you can coax Pokemon out from hiding places and trigger various events by throwing food and interacting with the environment, all in the name of getting the best shot possible. It worked ever so well back in 1999, so fingers crossed the Pokemon Company have managed to pull the same trick twice with this Switch sequel. Those are all the picks with specific release dates. The rest of the games in this video have vague windows like spring or summer or just 2021. On with the video. The LEGO games are always a fun time and the LEGO Star Wars ones in particular have got a fairly consistent track record. So LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which covers all nine of the core Star Wars films, should be a grand old time. There looks to be a great mix of lightsaber battles and space-bound dogfights whilst the game's official webpage promises you can visit any point in the saga at any time. So if you want to kick things off with some pod racing and then jump straight to the good films you can do, happy days! Supposedly originally slated for last year, despite no official word of such, development was clearly delayed a little and the game's now slated for a spring release. So fingers crossed we'll have our mitts on this one by June. Monster Hunter Rise isn't the only Monster Hunter game headed to Switch this year, oh no, with Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin slated for a summer release. The Stories spin-off from the main Monster Hunter series is an entirely different kettle of fish though, with turn-based battles, a much cuter art style, and a Pokemon-esque mechanic where you have to collect and hatch eggs to earn your own monster companion. The first game arrived on 3DS towards the end of that console's life cycle, and despite being a great game, was arguably held back slightly by the aging hardware, so it'll be fascinating to see what this Monster Hunter side project is truly capable of once it hits the Switch. I can't wait for No More Heroes 3. The first game back on the Wii was arguably my favourite game on that system, at least that wasn't developed by Nintendo themselves, and Travis Touchdown is long overdue a full-fledged comeback. It promises to have all of the series' trademark bonkersness, with the plot revolving around an alien who travels to Earth, befriends a young boy who saves him from the authorities, escapes to his home planet, and returns years later to conquer Earth. It falls to Travis to stop him, and the arcadey beam katana combat and wrestling throws would appear to be in full effect in this new entry. Originally slated for release last year, it was delayed until 2021 in September. Fingers crossed it doesn't suffer any more delays and does indeed arrive sometime this year. Okay, confession time, I know absolutely nothing about the Shimigami Tensei series. Apologies, perhaps a knowledgeable viewer can give us a brief overview down in the comments and I'll pin it so you can learn a bit more. According to Wikipedia, mind you, the series has consistently seen critical and commercial success, so maybe Shimigami Tensei 5 is one I should check out. Each entry in the RPG series is a standalone story apparently, so if you're new to the franchise like me, you won't be too lost. The series apparently deals with much more mature themes than your typical fantasy JRPG too, with elements of philosophy, religion, occultism and science fiction having all been incorporated in previous entries. Speaking of which, a HD remaster of Shimigami Tensei 3 is slated for the spring as well. Streets of Rage 4 was one of my favourite games last year and the teams behind the revival of that classic franchise are looking to pull a similar trick with Windjammers 2 at some point in 2021. The original Windjammers, which can currently be found on Switch, launched on the Neo Geo arcade platform back in 1994 and was essentially Pong on steroids. Having played the Switch version, it's actually great fun, and I also got to give this follow-up a go at an event back when they were a thing, and much like Streets of Rage 4, it seems to keep everything that made the original experience so good intact, whilst adding a fresh coat of paint and a modern feel. Another one that was originally slated for 2020 before being delayed to this year, fingers crossed it's one we'll see before the year is out. Okay, so I've got one more game to mention, and it's probably the most widely anticipated one of the lot. I have kind of broken my no random vague release date rules on this one, but it's been 
in the works for so long that it just has to come out this year. Silk Song actually started life as DLC for Hollow Knight before Team Cherry got carried away and decided to make it into a full sequel instead. Originally revealed in February 2019, the pair of Aussies that make up Team Cherry have been decidedly tight-lipped about when we can expect to see the final game. I was lucky enough to go hands-on with a demo at Gamescom in 2019, and what I played felt incredibly good, not a demo that suggested there was tons and tons of work still to be done. Edge Magazine have recently had a big cover feature on the game too, which suggests that the Metroidvania is entering the closing stages of development, and Team Cherry even revealed they're working on another project alongside Silksong. Again, not something you'd expect them to be exploring if they still had a long ways to go with the game. Fingers crossed then, Silksong, which is a Switch console exclusive for the time being, don't forget, will indeed arrive in 2021. So there you have it guys, let me know down in the comments which games you're looking forward to this year and let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you did, we've got tons of other cool stuff here on the channel for you to enjoy and we have new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Don't forget to check out the NintendoVillage.com for more Nintendo news, reviews, features, podcasts and all that cool stuff. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you all next time.